Okay.
It doesn't mean that they're going to actually spend that. They are scratching. All right, can we get to more to okay? So we'll bring this uh call this meeting to order July 24th at 6 30. And um Deputy first, can you please read the uh, roll call, please? Also, for the record, it's July 31st. That's fine. Not this. <laughs> Carter. Ellis. Here. Gagan. Here. Hodgkin. Here. Lawrence. Here. Mackey. Here. Morrison. Caracini. Here. Fredo. Here. Cedar. Here. Swar. Here. Taylor. Here. Or. Here. Thank you. Sorry, I'm several people tonight. So, um, can you please stand for the role and uh, the pledge of allegiance if you can? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thank you very much. Yes. Um, I, I, I think of how to say this. Um, we need to elect a council president pro tem to run the meeting, and I nominate um, council members for second it. All right, are there any, any other nominations? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Right. Her job will be um, the approval of the agenda. I'd like to make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Okay. I would like to amend oh. the agenda. Yeah. Um, to add an executive session for up to 30 minutes immediately following the approval of the agenda in accordance with RCW 42.30.110F to receive and evaluate complaints or charges brought against a public officer or employee. However, upon the request of such officer or employee, a public hearing or a meeting open to the public shall be conducted upon such complaint or charge. Um, Right. Is we have second. second. Okay. I would like to amend the agenda. Okay. Um, I would like to strike a special agenda item to resolution from the agenda. I second it. First and second. Is there any discussion? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. All right, so we have a first and a second on um, the, uh, the executive session. Uh, is there any discussion on that? We don't have a motion on the floor. Oh, I thought, yeah, we do. I thought we had a first and a second. Right. Motion to approve the agenda that we're going to Yes. Yeah. We need that much vote. But we still need to vote on mm -hmm. So, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? All right. Um, okay, so we're going to go public comments. We have to keep this meeting kind of short. Oh, it's starting to be here. We're going to executive session. Oh. Directly as well. All right, so we'll go into executive session. We'll be back in 30 minutes. Mr. Mayor, we need a motion. Uh, <laughs> Can I move to join the executive session? Is there any discussion on that? No. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
will be back in 30 minutes. <laughs> <laughs>
I know that. Yeah. Never mind. Right. I'd like to make a to compound the executive session and back to the regular meeting. Second agenda discussion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. 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 I'm going to ask you to be respectful <laughs> and uh, please stop talking, even if you're my friend at the end of your, your time. We have to stop you, then we get any special treatment here. Uh, I got this gavel again. If I'm banging this gavel, that means everybody stop talking. It's, and I'm, I'm serious about this. There, are, We have people in the department that will remove you if you can't you know, keep your um, private comments to yourself when somebody else is talking that means nobody else in the room should be talking we have to all remember this meeting is actually a meeting for us to conduct our business more so than public comments i also want to say if you have a public if you're making a public comment on the camping ordinance can you wait until we go in to that portion of the meeting and there will be a time there for you to comment so um so you're up sir Please give your start with your name and your work. Uh, Drew Dahl, Ward 6. I think you there's a, a little bit. Oh, thank, thank you. you. Drew Dahl, Ward 6. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, people of Aberdeen, Grace Harbor, I come before you tonight, not as a Republican or a Democrat, but as, as a citizen of Aberdeen. I've now attended the last half dozen or so city council meetings. I'm ashamed at the state of things in this town currently. I'm ashamed at the current state of this council. Partisan politics should play no part in role in this room. I don't care what party you belong to. We all want the same general thing, a safe, clean, lawful, beautiful city. Our city is currently none of these things. I beg of you. We beg of you, put your feelings about each other's politics aside. Step up for our town. We the people have had enough. We want better. No, in fact, we demand better. We need more transparency, not less. We need to run the dope out of this town. We need to get the community involved. I propose that we create a day, maybe even monthly, for volunteers in the area to clean up and spruce up this town. This is a fight we can win. Take away all the freebies. Take the methadone clinic out of town. Let the nonprofits that make money off this problem follow that crowd out of town. Let's take our city back. Since I have a minute left, I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself and whatnot. I work at the post office in Aberdeen. I'm all over this town. I'm all over Oakland. I'm all over Causey. I'm all over Central Park. I see this city probably more than anybody on a daily basis. On my weekends and my days off, I'm in Ocean Shores or in Westport, fishing, foraging, enjoying our beautiful nature. What I don't see in those towns is the same problem we have because they don't put up with it. They don't give anybody free passes. We have to stop giving people free passes. We need to hold people accountable when they're breaking the law. We need to stop saying it's okay, just walk away. 
you know, go over here where we don't see it. That's not acceptable. If we have people that are breaking the law and blatantly doing this, we need to hold them accountable and 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 punish them accordingly or send them packing. We we can't have this lawlessness. Thank you. Thank you. I'm blessed to follow that. My name is Angie. I moved to Ward 3 a few months ago, and I was pretty alarmed by the local Facebook community gathering page. It was being run by a man who was very clearly pushing an intentionally hateful agenda. I was even more appalled to see that this person pushing literal fascism in my new community is already an elected city council member. Fascism doesn't start with white power. It starts at not in my backyard. Fascism grows when hateful narratives about containing and removing the others is left unchecked. It turns out the elected city council member that was running on a fascist agenda and pushing literal Nazi propaganda is a pedophile who's now in jail. After being caught and admitting to the rape of a child in the first year. This, according to his biggest supporter on our local hate page. I'm new to this town, so I do not know the history of how we got a man pushing fascist propaganda elected into a position of power in this town. But I certainly hope every single person who voted for the pedophile that's pushing hate takes a whole step back and reevaluates if their morals are in alignment with what's happening over in Ward 5. We're not the same, for that we should embrace. But these are the tools they use to separate. Some are afraid, some are full of rage. We do all feel like we've been betrayed. Let's focus on healing this community rather than creating division with our neighbors over the matters of kings who rule from 2,000 miles away. Thank you. away and I am in Ward 3 and I was not going to come tonight and I was not going to speak tonight but I felt that I needed to because some slanderous remarks were made about me and these slanderous remarks were made two years ago also I contacted the city administrator two years ago about this post that a ward's daughter had put on her page and said that I was crushing on her. And the city administrator had at that time said, it's freedom of speech. And I said, well, okay, it's freedom of speech for me to get a lawyer too. The post was taken down. This past Saturday, this past Saturday, council member's friend, two friends, council member's daughter, slandered me. Defamation of character? Yes. Council member's daughter said I grabbed her boob at the fire two weeks ago around cops, but I grabbed her boob. Another friend said that I assaulted her. And again, there were how many cops down there at the fire that day? How many cops are down there? But I had the time to grab a minor's boob and assault a lady. This person decided to yell this stuff to my friend at Safeway parking lot. April Obi grabbed so and so's boob, a minor. April Obi did this. April Obi did that. I was devastated. This is uncalled for because I have an opinion about the homeless, because I care for the people at the homeless camp. And so now they're going to try and slander my name or what? Or what? When is this insane crap going to stop? 
I wasn't going to come here today because I told some people at City Hall I'm tired of the toxic tornado of hate. No one's getting along. Everybody's pointing the finger at everybody. Everybody's lying about everybody. But when it comes to me saying stuff like that, It's wrong. And these people came up here to back me up and hold me if I fell down. Thank you. Oh. Uh, my name is Derek Ferguson. I'm from Ward 1. Um, excuse me, I broke this out. <clears throat> Last meeting, I was speaking for myself as a man. But since then, I've been turned on to the most disrespectful Facebook page. And no, today I speak for the homeless. Now, it's not my place to speak on the man who made this Tweakers of Aberdeen website, although my, most of my interactions were with him this past weekend. But I'm here for a different reason. Today I want to I want to think about ways that help. In King County and Pierce County, we have what Lehigh, um, the tiny home community, and the stability house in Pierce County. Now, I don't know what, if you guys are like will will fit for that, but I have reached out myself to the guy in on 69th and Proctor in the tiny home village, and I'm, I'm sure I can get resources to, to try and help. So we're not just picking people up and moving them. That's not kind of wrong. I've I got I gotta say that that that's wrong. And I know it's you guys the neighborhood. I'm not from Aberdeen. I'm from Federal Way, Washington. We don't see this in Federal Way. We see this in Tacoma. And, but I've been in this position. And if I've been in this position, why not try to help? Now that the individual who's over there isn't here no more, I feel like maybe some things could possibly get done if. Everybody wants to help. Now, what the gentleman back here was saying about a specific day to clean the volunteers, I'm with all of that. I, I'll even try to get some of the homeless to come help do that. It might not work, but hey, I'm one of the homeless. So why not put the word out there? Maybe it can work. That's all I'm going to say. I hope you guys take this into deep consideration because uprooting people and sticking them somewhere else, that's, I'm sorry, not right. Have a blessed day. Uh, hello, my name is Isabel Harley. I'm a member of Ward 1. I, I don't know. Anyway, uh, good evening. As a resident of Aberdeen for over two decades now, I would say it's more than fair for me to speak on the treatment of our unhoused citizens. To get straight to the point, the city of Aberdeen, specifically some of the council members, I guess not present today, um, have put the lives of many of our most vulnerable citizens at risk of illness, turmoil, and death. The constant violent rhetoric made by people in powers of or in positions of power, comparing them to as an eyesore, or sorry, comparing these people to violent, violent drug users and eyesores, you have put an unachievable standard in place that for any of them to receive help, they must jump through numerous hoops that even a, ho a house person would consider difficult. You have bred hate, apathy, and ignorance all under the guise of concern. I wish I could say that any of this comes as a surprise, but in light of recent events and prior ones that I have been, been made aware of, it isn't. On Saturday, the council members Casey Morrison and Riley Carter made false accusations of and leaked personal information of the pe person I live with, I along with my six-year-old child. Despite the constant hand-wringing over the safety of our children, it's glaringly obvious that Casey Morrison doesn't give a damn about that. After continuously saying his family was being put at risk and encouraging violence towards people, he assumed, and that's important to say here, he assumed have wronged him, a failed attempt to reach out to Riley Carter directly, or and a failed attempt to reach out, reach out to him directly, I decided to, to talk to the city administrator regarding his conduct. I assume everyone here is aware of what has occurred since last night. And I'd like, like to ask, uh, ask you, do these monsters have the right to make the decisions for us regarding the safety of the unhoused? And I 
Commissioner Board 5. I read what the mayor posted on his own personal page involving shots fired at a Trump rally in Pennsylvania, and all I can say is BFD. Begging the mayor's pardon, as I may refer to it, he laments how, quote, sick politics has become. As someone who has followed politics closely since the age of six, which kind of tells you something, I fully get it, and he's absolutely right. He questions whether the incident was staged or in some other way disingenuous. He is certainly not the only person to question the accounts of the story, but he still ends his, his first statement with, and I'm quoting here, any way you look at it, it was a horrific act, unquote. He ends his post with, I'm quoting, I hope I'm wrong, but because of his record of deceit, that's the first thing that came to mind, unquote. Trump was recently convicted by a jury on all 34 felony counts involving falsifying business records and paying $130,000 to a porn star to influence the outcomes of the election. He faces an additional 54 federal criminal charges, which are still active, not to mention his involvement in the insurrection of January 6th. Fact-checking by PolitiFact, NPR, the BBC, Fact-Check, CNN, Associated Press, and numerous other sources found no fewer than 24 falsehoods in the debate alone. His list of high crimes and misdemeanors, may, uh, many of which have already been proven, can be squeezed into this simple three-minute presentation. But regarding the incident uh, in a piece in the New York Times dated just last Friday, Malachi Brown had all state that, quote, the FBI said it was examining numerous metal fragments found near the stage to, de to determine whether a bullet or pieces of it had grazed Mr. Trump's head, bloodying his ear, unquote. So it's obvious that what the mayor in the guise of mild-mannered Doug or citizen art gallerist said on a personal post is at worst lukewarm milk toast. Yes, public officials are expected to stay within the bounds of decorum that is stricter than is what is expected of the rest of us. His posting does not come even close to that. If memory serves, your honorable council president during her campaign for the council seat had on display in a window in her house a Confederate flag, the flag of treason. At least that's what the photographs show, not to mention letting her young child wear proudly a hat emblazoned with the legend, Joe and the Ho gotta go. Is that appropriate for a sitting councilman? Sir? Where was the uproar about that? Publicly posting a banner on a main thoroughfare who's accusing the city of the a city of Aberdeen of murder. That seems a most egregious violation of the decorum that is expected of a public official. Thank so you. this whole thing seems to be a glass house situation. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Crystal Hernandez. I currently reside in Ward One. I recently. I'm the new face of the homeless. Recently, I became homeless myself. Before I would avoid into the bridge, I would not go around to get to Walmart. I would stand, I would sit in my car in the hot sun and wait 45 minutes just to get through instead of go around. But now that I am a part of that community and I took myself down there, I have met more respectful people than what I've met from this council. Since I've been homeless in this short two months, I have never been more disrespected, degraded, put down, called names. Even came, one of your council members came next door to the neighbor where I'm staying, talking about your children's not safe. These people are different. The only difference is he was living in a home I'm living in an RV, except there's one extreme more difference. I am safe around your children. I'm Miguel, and I'm one of the ex-people I did the east of the river. And like I said, that's big jail all over the place in the county. Fortunately, I am in recovery today, and I follow the heels of a lot of people that are in recovery from drug court and from just the streets. Um, 
I'm very happy to say that I'm not using drugs today. And we have a lot of people in recovery that are fortunate that we have the resources to help me and us. And we need a chance. The people need a chance. I mean, regardless of whether they fall down one time, two times, or ten times. I can't tell you how many times I've been in jail for how many things. And they kept picking me up and helping me. And today I, I am in a better place than I was. Here we go. Um, don't give up on us people that are on the street. I live in a house in Oakland, the girl for just right in the rent for And um, I have a bunch of roommates that are also in drug court, and they're all doing well. The county is taking a chance on us, and I appreciate that. They're taking a chance on me, and I appreciate that. I never thought that after 10 years that I would be in position today to stand in front of you folks and ask for help for the people that are on the street. Thank you. Uh, Maya, or five, and I just really came with a reminder for everybody in this room, um, including all of you, that yes, my husband is Riley Carter and he is in jail because he is a disgusting pig. And that was just found out. I am not accepting any of your commentary. Thank you. Now, you also need to be reminded that a child is involved. And I am sick and tired of you guys getting yourself so riled up because the last time that you guys did that, I had people in my home and terrifying my children. You guys get each other so riled up and you guys let it happen because you don't shut down these comments. Like a child was involved. My child was involved. Mine. And you guys want to get each other riled up? April of oh, Obi oh, over here wants to go off with her lies. I have a video. Excuse me, that, I'm to address this. Okay. Yes. Hey, that that woman over there is filling everybody in here full of lies and inciting nonsense. It's, going to border. Uh, it's not acceptable. Yeah. It's not acceptable, but it's acceptable for them to come up here and, and talk about my family and the situation that happened to my family the way that they have been, and nobody shut that down. A child was involved, and nobody shut that down. I have every right to tell these people to knock it off. Every right. And how dare you guys try to call a point of order on protecting a child. Because they will incite themselves. And you know this because I've complained to almost every single one of you every single time I have been attacked at my home because of what they bring up here. Because of what they say. Because of how they hype each other up. My child gets involved and you guys aren't the ones that shut this down here in this setting you're just not even close to the last of me any one of you will be hearing from my child this is ridiculous that you guys allow this to happen and try to shut it down we all know that's disgusting what happened be in my shoes be in my daughter's shoes but you won't thank you thank you Great. Next one. Yeah. There's another uh, open uh, comment period at the end. Yeah, that would be why. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You, you'd be the first one. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I would like to make a motion to refer to its consent agenda, which contains the minutes from July 24th, 2024. Go Is there any discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? It can pass. Now we have a presentation coming up with um, about the sit and lie ordinance, ordinance with um, Alexandra Kenyon. And I'm just going to remind everybody again that uh, during her presentation, there is no public comment at all. And if you do, then we'll have to ask you to leave or remove the idea. Thanks. 
Bye. Good evening, Council. Thank you for having me tonight. Um, Dale asked me to um, give a brief presentation on the um, sit lie ordinance given the recent Supreme Court case. Um, Dale, I know that, uh, excuse me, Chief Green has talked with some of you about um, possibly amending the code or how the code will um, be effective going forward. Currently, the, the code says that there's no sitting or lying in the downtown parking and improvement district between 6 a.m. and 11 p.m. with some certain exceptions. Um, if the council were to consider amendments, there's possibility of expanding the territory um, that this ordinance would apply to, or the, the council could expand the time frame for enforcement. Um, one practical consideration um, that Chief Green and I discussed would be if the council were to consider a, a ban citywide, um, where the sit light ordinance would apply citywide. And if that was pursued, we'd want to carefully think about some of the implications to the Parks and Rec. Um, as an example that Chief Green used, we talked about if someone wants to lay down in the park um, on a sunny day watching their kids play, that would technically uh, be a violation of the sit light ordinance. So um, Chief Green's recommendation, and I uh, agree, is to let the anti-camping ordinance go into effect and have enforcement start to take place before moving forward with considerations of um, amendments um, of the sit light ordinance. Um, if you have any questions, happy to discuss or please email me so we can um, have a privileged conversation or let me, um, me or Chief Green know if you have any questions. Are there any council questions? All right, thank you. Thank you. All right, um, Mayor's report. I just wanted to say that we live in a beautiful city. I don't care what anybody says. This city is gorgeous. And when I came here, I was blown away that when I left, I didn't see all the beauty that's here. I was really sad to see that our city had, had been lax and tearing down all of its beautiful historic buildings downtown, but that's unfortunate. We can try and save the ones we have, but we don't have the best looking downtown, but we have the bones for a beautiful downtown. We have some wonderful businesses that are already located down there. And if we want our downtown to be better and our city to be better, then we as citizens have to stop talking poorly about it. Uh, we're the ones, we're our worst enemy as far as sending this horrible message about our community. And I know I made a mistake and posted something negative, and that's really not what I try to do. And um, I just felt, hope all of you, you see that, that we really have such a wonderful building block here. It can really be a fantastic, we, we are the heart of the Harvard. We can actually be. When I was a kid, everybody came to Aberdeen. It could be that way again, but the, the people that have to stand up are the local people who live here. We have to allow it to happen and get out of any way. So uh, part of it is getting our homeless population under control. It doesn't mean we're going to get rid of the homeless population. They're community members just like we are. We have to help them figure out a path to stay in our city. Those that aren't from our community, they can go. I don't care. They can go back to their city. But but our, we have members of our community who are homeless, and those are the people that we need to be looking out for as a as a, a city council. And uh, they're not all drug addicts. So they're people who are in unhoused for a million different reasons. Um, I was in house at one time, and I pulled myself up and got out of it. And I believe there are most of the unhoused people want that. There's a and pull that don't, and we need to deal with them individually and not as a as a group. Um, all right, so are there council reports? Oh, hold on. Uh, so rain flow was Saturday, and I, um, thousands of people were there. It was a fun event. Um, I saw some of you there, and um, I'm glad that you, you came. Elizabeth's there. Or, I'm sorry. The council person Ellis was there. 
But anyway, it was a wonderful event. And anybody who says bad things about it, they just need to get out their butt and go to it. Double sneak in, but actually pay and then go to it. And, and you'll see what a wonderful event it is and how, I mean, it's all this wonderful smiling people enjoying themselves in our downtown. The downtown that so many people just write off as being a, a desolate place nobody wants to go to and it's building. It's, you know, it could be so much more, but we just have to step up and go in that direction. All right, so um, council report. We have a council report. Oh, okay, let's move on to staff reports, administrator Prime. Staff report. Thank you, Mayor, Thank you, City Council. Um, I'm back. This is my first week back from a yeah. week vacation. Yes. <laughs> so that was uh, very nice. Um, one of the requests that was made by the council prior to the 30 day extension was to for the community, some of the community resource groups to provide um, data. Um, I'm happy to say that I was able to receive data. I received it um, late this afternoon, so I will be able to send that out to you, but I can give you some highlights. I was able to get some averages and some sums from this. Um, about 35 people responded to the survey that they um, administered down at the camp. And um, they, the group, the group of 35 that indicated that there are about 70 of them that live within those 35. They live with like, you know, in total with the 35 tents, there's 70 people that live within those, some of them having up to six people in one tent. Um, the ages of the people down there range between 17 and 72. Um, when asked how long each of them have lived in Aberdeen, um, three indicated that they've lived there six to 12 months. Um, another three indicated, um, and then the rest, I guess, three indicated six to 12 months, and then another three indicated one to two years. Um, about 26 of them who answered this question stated that they have lived in Aberdeen for more than two years. Another question that was asked, again, I'll, I'll send all of these out to you, but I thought I would share um, for the audience to also have. If you moved to Aberdeen, where did you move from? There was a number of different places that people indicated, Peoria, Everett, North Bend, Olympia, Lewis County, Port Townsend, Matlock, Tohola, um, Brayman, Elma, uh, Sioux City. So uh, just a, a large number uh, or a wide um, geographical area that these people have originated from and have moved here. Um, what, why did you come to Aberdeen? The majority stated that they moved here for friends and family. And um, what do you need most right now? Um, I would say, and they had a scale that they could rate. It looks like it was a uh, one to five or one to six. And it looks like the thing that rated the highest, the top three. So number one was um, addiction services. Yeah, men, yeah, addiction services, mental health, and medical care seem to be the top issues that they need right now. Um, and then what services do you think would help you the most? The number one answer uh, was 32 people responded permanent housing, 22 responded temporary shelters, and then there were some for mental health and substance abuse treatment. Job training was also included in that, healthcare services, legal assistance, but um, those were the top three. Number one was permanent housing. So again, I will mail those all out to you. Um, after this, I received it late this afternoon. And so are there any questions regarding this report. Yes. Thank you. Thank you very much for that information. Does that come from more than one service provider? No, that came from a Coastal Community Action Program, CAP. Um, I sent the email to all service providers, More Right Group, Destination Hope for Recovery, um, all of the ones that are included in a consortium um, of sorts, like a group that we meet with um, before every cleanup. 
and CAP was able to heed the call and respond and provide this information. Very good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, uh, Administrator Clemens. I think what the council really was more interested in, although I'll speak just for myself, is while that baseline information is good to kind of understand a bit more about the population, I think what we really want to see and what I certainly want to see is what are all these different social service agencies doing? How many of these are they serving? How many have they gotten housing for? How many of them have they been able to get into a treatment program? Yeah. Uh, all of that. And, and those are more of the statistics I, I'm certainly interested in, and I think the rest of the council is interested in. These were the questions that were asked when the 30-day extension happened. That was the immediate, these were the immediate questions that came that I jotted down and was able to get and I forwarded them on the group. So I'm happy to work with um, the, the, the groups, the, the, the community service groups to see if we can get some more data or bring one of them out. I, I'm sure CAP would be more than happy to come out and deliver a presentation to all of you of all the services that we'll provide them, that they house and all the statistics. So if you would like to send me the information that you would like to see in this presentation, I'm happy to forward that on to CAP to ensure that it's included. Uh, I appreciate it being CAP, but I think we need more than just CAP. We For need sure. more right. We need Operation and Hope and Recovery. We need every social service agent or as many as we can get to all provide input. Of, you know, we have a, a fairly broad base and number of social service agencies yeah. in this community. I'd like to know what each of them or as many as we can get, what are they actually doing? in and for the community and those who are in need in the community. I can, I can do that. I can work with them. Um, the group really before a lot of the, the consideration, before the consideration of even a, a, a village, hadn't really gotten together outside of maybe a county meeting that they're required to attend because they all receive county funding. So um, the city, um, thanks to all of you, they we provided them a, a way for all of them to meet on a regular basis and really hone down on these important topics. So yes, I'm happy to get that information and bring something back to the council. Um, so yeah, happy to do that. Thank you. Council person Austin, did you have a question? Um, no. No. I he, he asked it. Okay. He reminded me. Council person. <laughs> I think it would also be helpful to know where the gaps are. I understand there are limited funds for paying for rent and getting people into housing. Um, if we could know what those backlogs look like, it might help us advocate both at the county level and the state level for new resources. Okay. Any other questions for administrative funding? Yes. Um, I was just wondering, um, since they put the the 30 day in place, I'm just kind of curious what has been done. Have they gone down there? Have they talked to these people and helped them? Have they gotten these situations? Because the time is running short. And I'm wondering if they put anything in place to help these people. Yeah, I think that they have. Um, again, we're limited. The camp has grown, and we're limited to uh, we're, we're limited by housing shortage. Um, we also have passed the Union Gospel Mission providing weekly updates on what their bed vacancy looks like, and have there been an increase in people using their services? It doesn't appear that there is there has been an increase in people using their services. Um, what we have, what he has seen, what. Um, Charlie Coleman, their uh, CEO, their president or CEO, stated was that there has been an increase in people coming to get meals. So um, yeah, that so we do get regular updates from them. But as far as I know, the social services group are aware of what's happening, um, and I think that they're definitely trying their best to get people housed as quickly as possible. But we are our hands are their hands are tied to a housing shortage. Yeah, thank you. And I know one of the Folks who spoke last council meeting that's already been housed and has been silenced. They are they're working on it. Yes. Anybody else? All right. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, any of the directors have a report? Yes. Yeah, the director. 
Yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to bring up uh, a little bit about uh, an issue that we had last last meeting. There was some some scrutiny regarding the elevator. Yeah. Fair, fair enough. Um, I just wanted to give a little brief, brief overview of uh, maybe the process so, so people understand what goes into it. Um, what we were asked to do was procure a elevator in the shortest time period. Um, and uh, there's two ways to go about that. Well, actually, the way we would normally do it is we would put together a, a scope of work, uh, a design, and a good specification. And that, that's a six month process at the very least. Um, we are not elevator experts, so we would have had to go out and get a, a consultant to do this work. And that price, we don't know what that price would be, but we would expect it to be somewhere around sixty to eighty thousand dollars. That's that would be typical. Okay. So um the other way is through a through our procurement policy is to hire a a cooperative or go through a cooperative which is a piggyback bid. And, and that's what we chose to do. We thought that was the, the shortest time period to get, get it through. I understand the concern about what we presented. It didn't have a lot of detail. And I absolutely agree with, with Stan that, that there was more information needed, more information needed. Um, but I dug into it. We asked our consultant first, the cooperative. That is a, that process meets our procurement policy. It also meets the state statutes of of uh, you know advertising and and putting out bids and getting out specs, so um, it's an approved process. So what we did was we went back and um, we we put this um, this cooperative together. We went through there, which was a Kansas City High elevator they put through. Um, we uh, asked for a a schedule of values, which is very normal when you get a lump sum bid. You get a schedule of values after the fact. That's basically breaks down how that lump sum bid was bid so that you have the ability to pay them as they build the elevator what the, what the, for the work that they've done, right? You wouldn't just pay them a whole amount. You would, um, and that schedule of values, um, you can see that there's, it's broke down into a number of things. One's called down payment, which we don't pay down payments, but material, subcontractor work and installation. So if you look at the, the, the the down payment, those items are basically what would have happened by a, a consultant doing a design, the survey, the procurement, the submittals, um, all that information would have been done by a consultant. That's about $80,000 of work. What we've essentially done is not, we're not replacing an elevator per se, we're designing and building an elevator. We're taking the design work out of the, out of the, uh, off our lap and we put it on the contractor's lap through an approved process. And you can see that that work is about $85,000. So the bid was not $464,000, it's $624,000 plus tax. So six twenty four 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 sixty four. dollars sorry, dyslexia kicking in. So $64,000 was with the tax, four twenty four dollars was without the tax of the approximately, you subtract off the 85,000 and you're down to about $340,000, which is, I think, even by Stan's book, in the ballpark of what he would expect. The other process adds six to nine months. Um, there's a couple of reasons for this. The the, the cost, I, I don't know how old your books are, Stan, but, but the one thing, one, <laughs> Nelson and Cedar. I apologize. Um, uh, one of the one of the things is municipal engineering is and, and design and construction is very expensive. Uh, the lead time on the the equipment that we need is, is a year out on the electrical equipment. Um, the the fact that um, lost my train of thought. Yeah, well. Basically, what it comes down to is that three hundred forty thousand dollars is in, is reasonable. Prevailing wage for the people that work on these elevators is what we have to pay. We don't have a choice. Is one hundred and ten, one hundred eleven dollars an hour to one hundred and twenty dollars an hour. That is by RCW. We don't have a choice. That's so. It's not the same as as residential or private ties um, construction. I'm just saying. There's a lot of things that play into it. The um. 
elevator itself, because the building is, it has to be custom built. Everything about this elevator has to be replaced from the cab. The cab is one of the last wooden cabs left in the state. Um, it uses an old hydraulic system. Um, they were in, unable to include a machine room, so we have to stick with the old hydraulic system that's kind of an outdated method, but it is still used. Um, and they also have to send this out to elevator specialists like, to have everything built in the Midwest. So none of them are even being constructed here, in the, and it's going to take about a year's time to even have this constructed. It's a very specialized, like niche type of work. And the estimates that you see in this is not necessarily what they're work. This is the estimate that they're providing us because everything has to be specially built. What we're going to pay in the end hopefully won't be this much, but this is the best that they can do is provide us this estimate. And that's, that's the way that it works. And because everything is kind of on a reimbursement basis, we don't give them the money up front. We pay them after like they submit their invoices to be reimbursed. Uh, Council person Cedar, yes, thank you. I, I appreciate the feedback and the extra work that you went through. Um, I'm not saying the number is wrong. I'm just exercising my fiduciary responsibility to be a skeptic and to ask the questions and to do and to look into things and to kind of look it over and say, okay, can you give me a little more detail? Because the bid that we received or the contract um, at the last council meeting, I mean, it had three line items of numbers and one of those was sales tax. And it's it just like, okay, so what really are behind these numbers? Um, and I appreciate the fact that, you know, this is a custom, special built, unique um, elevator because it's going to have to be special fit built to meet our needs and that the specification to City Hall, which was built in what, 1960 something, um, and also that it's on a rush basis. So I appreciate all of those things. Thank you for your extra time and diligence in looking into this and providing a little more detail. Uh, I do appreciate it. Thank you. I'd also like to add my last employer, which was a government entity, uh, we had to replace the motherboard in the elevator. So nothing else needed to be replaced, but the motherboard, because it was obsolete and everything in our elevator is obsolete, um, that alone cost $150,000. So elevators, again, are very expensive. They're very expensive to maintain. It's the cost of having one, but they are very important to, for us to meet that ADA compliance. You know, and so that's why we're here today because we don't have an elevator. So we want to get it back online so we can get back into um, City Hall and we'll say goodbye to these nice little microphones that, you know. Yeah, I just want to make sure that that will be the nice tall guard. Put that in. <laughs> Sorry. All right, so uh, next on the list is the request for council act. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. Are there any other directors with reports? Uh, okay, last guy, good. Okay, so now we're going to uh, request for council action. So we have council uh, chair Hoshman. So we're going to um, do public safety. Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, so um, we've got. Um, I'm wondering to you what we're doing. This is the date of uh, today set for the public hearing on Bill 2403, an ordinance amending AMC 12.46, removing sections of AMC 12.46.030, amending AMC 12.46.040, and repealing AMC 12.46.045. And I move to open the public hearing. I'll second that. Um, all in favor of opening the public hearing? Aye. Okay. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. 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 So, uh, is there any comment on this? I see one hand going up. Did you want to talk or no? No, I still. Okay. Okay. So then there's no no okay. Oh, wait a minute. It's for the homeless, right? I mean, All right. So um, 
I'm Sarah Michael Brink and I live in Tent City. And um, regarding the stabbing, neither one of them lived there. To let you guys know, the person who was stabbed or the person who did. So I don't know if that helps at all. But um, I just wish that you guys would really realize the housing shortage and realize that we're doing our best to do what we can down there to get housed. But it doesn't... It, it doesn't take a week to get housed. I mean, it takes time. We have these programs that we're going through. It takes time to get approved for these programs. I applied for my program, um, I think it was June 12th. I don't have my appointment until Friday. And then I have six weeks to wait before I see if I get approved for the program or not. So it's not like it's something that's really easy to just do because other people are applying for programs too. Um, I am doing what I need to do to get housed, but, you know, it, with the housing shortage and with the rent prices, it's absolutely ridiculous. And, you know, it's hard. It's really hard. I just, I wish you guys would realize that we need a little more time down there. And not all of us are bad people. Not all of us are drug addicts. I mean, I was in the past. I'm in recovery still. I have been for quite some time. And I plan on staying there. I was clean for 10 years before I relapsed, you know. So I know that I can be a positive community member, you know. And I'm trying to fight for that right now so that I can get a house so that maybe I can help the homeless community a little bit more with the knowledge that I have and with, I don't know, being who I am. So um, thank you. Thank you. I'm Thomas Ford Fine. Um, I was wanting to inquire about um okay, you're going to be removing in the AMC twelve forty six, you are removing sections of AMC twelve forty six thirty. What are you removing from that? Yeah, um, I think I think we can. Well, we're going to have to get back with you on that. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's, yeah, it's in the package, so it should stay on there. Chief Green can probably specify what that is. Ms. Thompson, it does, it does say in the agenda packet. It's a uh, twelve forty six point zero three zero section A numbers one and two. I don't have an agenda pack yet. I've got what you gave out. It was posted online. And it says that it's okay. Well, it, it just it broadens it. It broadens the the area. Can you, so can you form, furnish me a copy absolutely. of what you're doing? Yeah, okay. This is not a, a comment that or you could make a comment, but we're really not allowed to engage with you. So well, they were engaging with me. I know that's how you <laughs> <laughs> But this is a hearing, I thought. This is a public comment. You can make a public comment, but we're not going to. But I'm at a hearing. Yeah. So we're just I'm, hearing. I'm not, a, I'm not a public comment. I'm at a hearing. And you're planning on voting on this, and then you're not giving me the opportunity to find out what it is? We is give you what? the opportunity by posting it online. We can also furnish you a copy after the meeting if you'd like one. I would at this like point, that. if you have comment on the hearing, please engage. Thank you. Becca. I would like that. Uh, because you're you're removing sections of, of uh, the 124630 and then you're amending 124640 and I want to know what that amendment is that you're giving and then you're repealing all of 1245 and on 1245 this is the enforcement of chapter section 124640 a one, two, three, and five, and they shall be enforced at all times. Section twelve forty six forty A through four, when no shelter overnight shall be enforced on date of or occurred. And there, there, we've already, you know, that one had already been adjusted and added to. And, you, and my understanding when we went into this that you were going to take that portion out that if if uh, if there was no shelter to enforce because of what the Supreme Court said that we don't have to abide by that. So I would really like to know, can you hold off voting on this until we're entitled to see 
And Annie, is it is it customary? Is it right that I'm required to go online because I don't do that to go online and research all this? And you're not required to. It has been posted three times as this is the third reading. And any time you can turn in a public records request if you felt the need. This is the third reading. This is the third time this has been on the agenda and posted online as well. <laughs> then why don't you have what? Why are you just saying we're going to take away, we're going to remove, and yada yada? Why aren't you we summarize on that? Right, I'm sorry. And, uh, as always. So, if you want to make fun, you're welcome to make comments. Okay. That's it. Well, I'll talk to you after council. Okay, Henry, uh, could I suggest that maybe in the future, when you do something like this, you supply the public with exactly what you are doing and not say we're going to add this and take away that? That's not right. That's no. that's not transparency. We're supposed to these things. You, these are you're going to have to stop talking now, please. You're not sitting here arguing with this. This is a meeting for us, and you weren't asking for your comment. This is a public hearing. Oh, wow. This is a public hearing. This is a public hearing. Yeah. This is a public hearing. I was asked to come up here. We're having a public hearing on Bill 2403 and yeah, so what? So you, we just need your hand. Okay. When when you when you come forward with stuff like this, let's have transparency. Let's have transparency. In, I, I in what we do and put it out there for us to see. And before you turn around and take a vote on it. Thank you, Pat. I didn't do this just to get out of the sunshine. Good evening, uh, Mayor and Council. My name is Sarah, and I have no idea what ward I'm in. Um, I live in Everton. I also work with, um, a, I work for a nonprofit with victims of violence, and the study that you did, I thought was the questionnaire, I thought was really interesting. There was one done in King County by UW. I believe it was in 2022 where they talked to people who were just substance abuse uh, folks who were struggling with substance abuse. And housing was one of their, their main issues. And it it wasn't just housing. It, and I'm going to quote the gentleman who said this, and it's not my words, and they're a little rash, but he said, if you had to live on the streets every day, would you want to rob that reality? Probably not. You'd probably want some kind of coping mechanism that helped you get through your day. Um, many people said in that study, and again, it was a UW study, that if they had housing, that um, along with the other services, that would help them to maintain some sort of sobriety or, or reach some sort of sobriety. I do not work in sobriety services. I work in violence services, but the intersections of those are go together. Again, because we're not necessarily, in many cases, dealing with a substance problem. We're dealing with a trauma problem. We're dealing with folks who are coping, using coping mechanisms, and we all have them. Mine is shopping, my husband will tell you. Um, <laughs> I don't even bite my nails and I stopped smoking in 2000, so I gotta get on Amazon. Um, my <laughs> point here is, I just wanted to bring up to the council that our program had a two year transitional housing. We had to shut that down this month because we had too many claims on our insurance because it's an old house and you know stuff happens when we have the communal home. We no longer can get insurance for that building. Therefore, our, we could not get insurance our agency would shut down. Therefore, all victims of sexual violence in the entire county of Grace Harbor would have to go to Olympia. We could not shut our agency down because we could not maintain this two-year transitional housing. It's not emergency housing. So something to consider is the massive amounts, like we have our homeowners insurance, right? For those of us who are housed and own our home or those of us who are housed and have renter's insurance. If you could not get that insurance, what would that mean for you? What would that mean that you would be able to remain housed? So that consideration along with the incredible, I spend a good portion of my time outside of my scope of trauma and violence and working with human trafficking victims. That's my speciality. I do this every day. 
I could really bring down a party. Um, please. Thank you. Thank you. Mayor, we have one comment online. Okay, um, you guys are next after that comment. Robin, see if you're online and have a comment specific to this public hearing, please unmute and speak. Absolutely. Can you hear me? Yep. Perfect. Um, I'm, my name is Robin Kozad. I apologize. I'm not in person tonight. Um, the, I do not live in the wards anymore, but I do own a business in downtown Aberdeen, Destination Hope and Recovery. I just wanted to ensure that the council knows that we're we're def absolutely committed to providing um, data. I think that you know the process forward really needs to be um, needs to be data driven and utilize what we can provide um, and some transparency from us as a social service entity. You know, there's some limitations, of course, to transparency um, being a provider of of health services. Um, but we're certainly committed, you know, we chose not to do a survey down at camp um, while the council did ask because we didn't want to do duplicative surveys and kind of step on toes. You know, if CAP was going to do a survey, let's rely on that information so that we don't have um, any duplicates happening so that you guys can get more accurate information. Um, but we're happy to provide more um, data that we can show. Um, I can pull together, you know, the individuals, how many individuals we've gotten housed since since the last council meeting um, that the uh, ordinance or the decision to um, de-establish the current homeless encampment was made, um, but to give it a 30 day, an additional 30 days. Um, so I'd be happy to provide some of that. I don't know whether the council um, would like a work group to do that or or how it could best be provided, but I'm sure I can work with Ruth and and we'll see how we can really, you know, make sure that we're moving forward in a positive direction. Um, as as we've said before, you know, we're we're working with people um, and that's hard work. <laughs> um, so I just wanted to make sure the council was aware of that. Thank you. Thank you. I've been here before you as one of many people who have been working tirelessly to fight for basic human rights for our unhoused populations. I've listened to the mayor and your can I get your name in order? Kate Matthews. I'm not really sure what the word uh, the uh, words are. Um, I come here before you as one of many people who have been working tirelessly to fight for basic human rights for our unhoused populations. I've listened to the mayor and many a council member discuss endlessly what about the do about the homeless problem versus the housing problem. Despite their many concerns, I have not often heard them discuss what it is they think about the homeless. I recently had a screenshot of a Facebook message leaked to me regarding the mayor's thoughts on the homeless, and I'd like to share that leak with everyone so the public may have an idea of what it is our mayor and perhaps certain members of our council truly think about that health population and what that means for uh, when they make decisions for that time. Quoting that, I guess they should be, I guess then I should be happy as if I were the cause of these people being hopeless, and I should be responsible and okay for paying for, uh, for them now. And yes, they are scum. The filth that they spread, the disgusting messes they leave everywhere have nothing to do with them being hopeless. They blame people like me for the mess they are in. Your guy will have a big mark on his forehead. He was knocked out for about half an hour or more. You will never be able to justify to me the horrific trauma you brought upon me and my family. Might as well burn our building down, then at least we could collect insurance and leave the, this area. You also uh, you have also hurt this community. Your justification doesn't help anything at all. It doesn't make my partner with a brain injury love this community again. It doesn't make it okay that 75% of our business will not come here now. It doesn't pay the massive bills I can tell you while we wait for your horde of crazies to move away. And it doesn't do anything to fix the problem. You may, not, you may or may not have saved a life, but you have fucked up as many more by your attempt. Um, with everything that's been said about the infidelities and crimes and hate campaigns, of various council members tonight, I asked, why are we allowing people who want nothing less than for the young house to be euthanized to members of our council or our elected mayor? Thank you. Hi. Hi. My name is Lauren. I don't know what word I'm in, but thanks to at least one of your council members, probably everyone in this room knows my address. Um. 
So that was your now mayor's response to an invitation to a conversation about about complaints during the cold weather shelter season a couple of years ago. During that time it was hard. We were sandwiched between two churches and not once did those churches, the county, anybody ask how they could help. They only came with complaints and threats. Now I want to talk about the Shahilas River Mutual Aid Network. Every night, they brought food, clothes, donations, cleaning supplies, volunteers, pet food, the only ones who showed up consistently every day. So you can call them, us, whatever you want. Nobody else put in work like they did. I did that job for no pay during a tumultuous time in my personal life and battling cancer. No one but them ever asked me, how are you? How can we help you? Shel running a shelter is a hard, hard job. And if you've never done it, you have no idea. But we did what no one else was willing to do. So we all need to get off Facebook, step up and put in some actual work for long-term solutions, or try not sitting or lying down for hours at a time. Thank you. Any more comments? I move to close the public hearing. I'll second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Okay. I got the next one. Um, in uh, on this date today, set for the public hearing on regarding Bill Twenty Four Dash O Four. An ordinance repealing AMC 10.20.100, removing the sections in AMC 10 regarding camping and vehicles. And I need to open the public hearing. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay, we're in public session. If there's anybody that wants to comment on what we're talking about right now, with testimony, please. Yeah, and it needs to be specific to what we're talking about right now, please. Can't hear you, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. Anybody who wants to talk about your testimony and uh, not engaging us, but just give testimony, it, but it, it should be relevant to what we're talking about right now. Mr. Mayor? Yes. You're coming back here very damn it. I can't understand the word you're saying. So you're going to have to pick it up a little bit so we know where we're going with this meeting. Okay? Thank you. It's Thank you. You can come up to the mic and talk. Thank you. Okay, so we are we are still in the public hearing. This is a bit different public hearing. Yeah. Okay, did we? I thought that we were in a public hearing, and then it seemed like we went into public comments. We did. We did. And it's we like closed. like we didn't have any organization of what was going on. Do you have comment relevant to repealing AMC ten twenty one hundred? Uh, we're talking about camping and vehicles we have. Yeah, we're, right now, no, it's, it's, I want to know what they're, uh, they're uh, removing the section of them. What are they removing? It's just like the other one. This is the third. May I get a, a copy of that at the end of the meeting also? I will not be giving you a copy at the end of the meeting. If you'd like to request one, you can do so. Okay. Like okay, thank you. And now we're I'll back up with you at the end of the meeting. Okay. Okay. There's a the procedure. <laughs> well, I thought we were in procedure, but obviously. No. You the motion. Yeah. I will close the public hearing on this issue. Second. Is there any comment? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? The public hearing is closed. Second. And a report. 
a uh, request from public safety recommending the city council authorize the purchase and installation of a fire station alerting system from the U.S. Digital Designs at the cost of $244,213.57. I move to approve this request. Second. Sure. Question? <laughs> Director saying you would do well to look at what was supplied to the fire department for their bid on this <laughs> page after page after page after page. Uh, um, thank you, um, Fire Chief uh, Golding, for the information. And uh, Char uh, Fire Chief Golding, can you tell us a little bit about this system? It's very interesting. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is a, a system, uh, the foundation of it uh, really is three things for us. Uh, health and safety of our firefighters, uh, employee retention, and increasing, or I should rather say, improving our response times. Um, this system will replace how we're alerted for a call within our two fire stations. Uh, right now we have circa 1980s at best technology uh, at work, uh, and that type of way we're being alerted is found to actually have long-term health effects for our firefighters. So that's the number one priority is for this system uh, with gentler lighting, uh, more ramped up gentler tones uh, to kind of be a, like I said, a more safe and healthy environment for, for the firefighters when we're being, uh, being alerted. Uh, so that's really the main foundation of it. Um, as well as when employees are leaving, going to other agencies, this is one of the top things that they mention about, you know, why they leave uh, in their exit interviews and the way that we are alerted um, really is a, a big issue for them. And, and it also helps us improve our response times from the aspect of right now when a tone goes off, you just kind of sit and wait, you listen for everything until you get to the address and then determine, oh wait, yeah, that's my call because everybody hears it. With this system, we'll be able to set it to where the South Side Station hears their calls. They know when that goes off, they're going on call. They're not waiting, so we're going to be able to improve those response times and get out the door just that much quicker. Thank you. Any more, Chairman? No. All right. I'll I move to approve this request. Starting with that. So moved and seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It carries. So I have um, ordinance. Uh, this is the third reading and final passage of Bill 24-03, an ordinance amending AMC 12-46, removing sections of AMC 12.46.030, um, amending AMC 12.46.040, and 040, and repealing AMC 12.46.045. I move to accept the third reading and move um, to the final passage. Second that. During the discussion, we have this for after the fire reading. Does somebody have it here to read all? Yeah, I can read that. Uh, the third and final passage is by. It's not. But. But we can't hear you when you're not talking to your mic. Okay. What okay? Yeah. Uh, is it okay hard range? Yeah. You have you had like all this other time before this meeting to read it. So and uh, what is the false reading of it? Twenty five dollars fine. Yeah, so that's okay. That's what you want to show. Okay, we're not going to read it right now. I'm not. Is there any uh, other discussion? Master person, the audience member, please quiet down. This is this is us conducting our meeting. Please. Probably should just keep my mouth there. And I'll since I'm not going to do that. Um, first up, this is the third reading of this bill for this proposed ordinance. And it's been made available as public information for over a month because we've had two prior meetings. So we've had at least two prior council meetings. Um, I think it was Chief Justice Gorsuch in their opinion on 
that recent Supreme Court case, so that the issue of homelessness is a very complex issue, and, and it is. And prior to that United States Supreme Court ruling, and prior to the recent Washington State Supreme Court ruling, um, I was all in favor of trying to do something to help our city deal with and alleviate all of the issues and the problems related to homelessness and the um, concomitant um, issues that come with that, including the crime and vandalism downtown, um, et cetera. But more to, to meet the needs, see if we could do something, recognizing that the city has limited resources to deal with this issue. Um, but with those Supreme Court rulings, um, I'm now taking the position and I realize, you know, this is a bigger issue than a city like the Aberdeen or most cities, especially one like Aberdeen or our such limited financial resources can really address and deal with. Um, this is really a bigger social issue and it needs to be addressed at the federal and or state levels. Um, and, and citizens really need to go to the state legislature or contact their congressional representatives and say, look, you know, we have needs in the communities. Um, I recognize there are, you know, rents are high. There's a real need for housing and, and more jobs. I mean, the city can only do so much to try to encourage. We don't, we don't create new housing. We don't create new jobs. We can only do things to try to make the city appealing to those who want to come here and create housing or create jobs. Um, and the encampments that we've had and the vandalism and all the other problems we've had associated with the homeless downtown is, is affecting our businesses negatively. Um, we've had a lot of citizen input from members of this community and business um, uh, owners downtown, um, how bad the problems are. And it may not, it's not likely all, I'm not trying to say everybody who's homeless is a criminal or is creating the problems, but it's a few bad apples that ruin it for everybody else. And it's time that we take action. It's been well past time that we take action. And we really need to move on this and do something to try to um, get rid of these encampments and not allow them. I feel badly. I do have some compassion for the people who are destitute and in this situation. But the social service agencies and others have got to step up. They've got to do more to try to help people. Um, and I know that there's a large contingency in this audience who's not liking a word that I say, but I listen to and represent a lot of citizens in this community. And we're just tired and we just want it to end. Um, and there's going to have to be more that will have to be done down the road. But um, hopefully this is just a start. Let's see where it goes. Let's start with white power. Oops. All right. So, uh, <laughs> right. This will be your question. Yeah. Roll okay. call vote. Ellis? Yes. Gagan? Yes. Hodgkin? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Garcini? Yes. Fredo? Yes. Cedor? Yes. Swar? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Passes 10 to 0. Mr. Mayor, this will be ordinance 6710. Thank you. Okay. I move to accept the third reading and move to final passage. Six seven one zero. No, can I on the next one? Yeah. Okay. That is it. Okay. Okay. Third reading and final passage of Bill twenty four oh four, an ordinance repealing AMC ten dot twenty dot one hundred, removing the sections in AMC section ten regarding camping and vehicles. And then I just then I move to accept. Okay, I move to accept the third reading and move to final task. Second that. Is there any more discussion on it? Being that, I would call it quick comment. And and this pertains to the via camping and vehicles and there are a lot of RVs around the community and other campers that people have been living in and uh, a lot of citizens in this community are not happy with that. We want to see them gone. 
Start the group not this one. Right. Yeah. All in favor? The, Aye. Maybe a roll call vote. Oh, roll call for Ellis? Yes. Gakin? Yes. Hodgkin? Yes. Lawrence? Yes. Mackey? Yes. Gargini? Yes. Fredo? Yes. Cedor? Yes. Swore? Yes. Taylor? Yes. Motion passes 10 to 0. Mr. Mayor, this will be ordinance 6711. Thank you. All right, so now we're back to our final uh, public comment period. So we have 15 minutes until the conclusion of our meeting. Yeah, here we go. All right, so we have right. so you have 14 minutes and then we'll give one minute to go to the order. And Al Smith, Wishbell Valley. Yep. Is it, can, do, can we have like 10 more minutes? Let's, nope. We'll just have to extend when it comes. Okay, we'll extend it. You can go ahead. Yeah. Oh, we'll sit down. No, 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 go ahead. Okay. Anyways, I, I was here to speak on three things at length, but uh, I was given a copy of your, uh, your agenda sheet, and the one on the back um, writes reports concerning the digital designs. Uh, for better communication system. And a person that's served 37 years on the fire department, uh, I, a good parable to what I'm going to say is what happened here uh, 17 days ago back in Pennsylvania when there was a lack of communication. And our ex president got shot at because there was no communication. We have that same situation here. We have an old communication system and an offering for you people. The okay the purchase of the digital operating system would be great because we have two fire departments really. We've got one across the river, one on this side of the river. And if you get a number of calls when guys are already out on the scene, they need to get the proper word. This system would answer your prayer. And so I would encourage you folks to think think about this and that's our yeah, we, we approve that. One thing that we need to do we improve it for buying. What's that? We are. We they just approved it. So we are fine. Oh, you did? Yeah. Well, thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hello, my name is Allison Channel. I am unsure what ward I live in. I believe I might be five, but I work for one of the many social service agencies that uh, provide services through Grace Harbor County and more. Um, one of the biggest issues that I'm finding is housing. We can't house people if there are not houses. We can't house people that um, when there's the rent's so high. We have a lot of many programs. We have serve a lot of many people around here. Um, I put a lot into um, trying to help my community before I worked in the social service. Trying to help with recovery mental health needs, and just down on your luck. A lot of us are a paycheck away from being homeless. I've experienced homelessness myself. I've experienced addiction. I've lost a lot of loved ones, and I've seen a lot of loved ones succeed. And um, I just am really disenchanted with uh, the continuous, almost bashing on social service agencies that we're not doing enough. Um, a lot of my coworkers and other organizations that we collaborate with, we are trying. And for you guys to say that we're not or we need to get it together, um, I just would appreciate that kind of banter to not really be it because that's not the case. So I just kind of wanted to explain what's going on and why we're not housing everybody. A lot of it has to do with funding, but the majority of it has to do with availability and affordability. And there's a lot of people on Social Security. You can't even move into a place just on Social Security. You can't even rent a one bedroom or a studio in some of these cases. So I appreciate you letting me comment. Thank you. A lot for those who weren't able to come here for one reason or another. Um, first, I wish to thank you, each and every one of you, for taking on the, the jobs that you have taken on. I know it's not easy, you have to deal with uh, rude comments on a day to day basis, but you still come to work, you still do what you have to do. And I know you're not here because 
Well, I listen to you. I know you're doing your job for those of you you do care about, who you do love, who you don't want to see get hurt or be in the position I've been in for the last few years. I know I mean, he look a little over dressed. But that's it for the respect of the programs. That's just DHR and CAP and the more right group for helping me out. I want to uh, show and present myself with the stuff that they have blessed me with. Um, and that's why I'm here, because I, I, yeah, I, I feel like I should do my part and at least say something or another. Um, most of the, the homeless, me included, didn't choose to be honest. It, it was, you're thrown into it. I, if you had told me five years ago, I would be here speaking at the council meeting for Aberdeen, I would have said, go fly a kite somewhere else. <laughs> but here I am. And I consider each and every one of you a member of a family, a member of the family I get to be a part of. Sure, we don't get a boss, but there's certain families, you know, the brothers and sisters are fighting, the parents will fight, the parents will fight with the kids. And at the end of the day, they still love each other. And they still want to be there for each other. And that's why I stay. I, I get and at it. And that's why I want to really work on fighting my addiction problems. I want to fight my mental health problems. Uh, I'm, I just wish to thank you, each and every one of you, and just follow what your heart should, uh, whatever is put upon your heart. Mm -hmm. You know, that, that gut feeling we get when I mean, we're doing something we're not supposed to do. Or we're supposed to be doing something we're not doing. Just follow your heart and that, that'll be more than enough. Uh, I've been helping myself at the, at the, the camp spending the most day, helping with the trash, helping out with other people, move their stuff around, or I uh, see someone in a wheelchair, I'll push them to the, the church for a meal. Um, and that just, I may not get anything in return physically, but I do get something in my heart. I get that good feeling like I've done the right thing. And that is more, more than just that. And I will continue on. I will continue on helping those who need help. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Alto Amor. I live down in the Tenth City. When I was first started with the rent going up, I was living in a uh, hotel. I said, this is not me. I thank God I'm not out there. All of a sudden, they started getting higher and higher. And all of a sudden, when I got where I couldn't pay for it anymore, I'm on the street. Then all of a sudden, they're saying, hey, there's a war on homeless. Wait a minute. You just made me a homeless. Now you put more on me? How's this working? And what kind of sense is that? Now you guys want to. You know, you need to get off our backs down there and understand that we, you think we're a nuisance, scum, garbage. You got people down there on the overpass throwing down pipe bombs. Before we had the fire, one girl had a pipe bomb lying on the left. She threw it just before it blew up. This is kind of stuff that you're inflicting on neighborhoods. You sitting there saying, oh, report in if you see somebody put up a tent. You're causing hostile in the streets toward the homeless people. We're not scum. You know, you need to wake up and stop the bullshit. Sorry. Do something. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle Carmen. I have my business downtown in Ward 1 and Ward 1, my house in John Mackey's Ward. Um, I was in a speech site. But as we're talking about homeless and we're talking about housing, one of the problems, and again, we don't think, right? We have this law, accessory dwelling units, but it's impossible for people to do that. And I would really like to ask the city council and the city to get together and really look and see how we can make it possible for homeowners to put these units in their backyards and on their sides and us free up some housing for people. Because I've looked into it, it's almost impossible. And I realize there are fire regulations and there are police regulations and everything. But if we made it so expensive that nobody can do these ADUs, this is where we're at. So I'm just putting it back on the council as something to think about. Okay? Thank you. Hi, 
I'm Kimberly Stahl French. I'm the housing director at CAF. Okay. And I just wanted to say that these meetings and some of this communication has really come a long way. Um, I met some of you in a very contentious meeting um, a few months ago. Um, and the communication and the collaboration amongst agencies has improved significantly. But I know we have a lot of work that we still have to do. Um, I know that you're wanting data and we can provide that. We did a presentation, CAP provided a presentation to the commissioners and maybe you did not see that, but I'd be happy to provide more of that. Um, but like Allison, one of my, my fabulous employees, and I know that I have so many of my employees who showed up here tonight. Um, there is a shortage of housing. There's a shortage of funding. And as many people as we keep supporting, there's still more that need it. And we try to help everyone we can. And it breaks everyone's heart when we have to turn someone down. No one wants to do that. Because we go out there and the majority of the folks on my staff have been there. And that's the reason why we hire them, because they can relate. And we have so many phenomenal programs and we go out there, we, we try to help. But when if you have ever asked for assistance or help, you understand how hard it is to make that step. And so my request is to please stop tearing down the agencies that are out there providing assistance and asking them, what are you doing? Or telling them that they're not doing enough. Because all that does is tear down the trust. All we're doing is forgetting that these are human beings. Every negative thing that was said about Pat was said to my people, and they are amazing human beings. I could tell you a fantastic thing about each and every one of them, but we would be here until midnight tomorrow. <laughs> so I'm just asking for us to take time and look at each other and remember that we are all here for the same reason, because we want to help people. And because we know that there are unmet needs out in the community. And if we work together and if we take time to see what we can put together as a solution, instead of figuring out what the complaint is, then I know we can accomplish a lot. Mm -hmm. How many more people do we have? One, two, three. Yeah, I got three, so yeah. Oh, well, we'll just go. It will, yeah. We'll do the motion for for 15 and we'll try and be out of here. Well, there a second. Yeah, you have to. We got a person a second. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Okay. Well, my name is Robin, and I work with Kimberly. I work with Allison. We pour our heart and souls into our jobs. And for you to say that agencies need to step up to help these people, I feel like you're personally attacking my morals, my ethics, my integrity. We bust our butts to help these people. Do you have any idea what even some of the barriers are? These A lot of these people can't go to the Friendship House. They can't go to the Mission. If they have disabilities, they're on oxygen. They can't go upstairs. They don't get to go into those places to have a safe place. <clears throat> Do you have any idea of some of the, the housing that we look at? Some of the housing we look at to potentially rent for these people are no better than where they're living. That's not acceptable. Not acceptable. There's just lots of change needs to happen. Well, you have Coastal Community Action Program, and I actually want to speak to you tonight as a private citizen. I grew up half a mile from this building. I've lived in South Aberdeen. I have lived in Westport. I have lived in Hopewell, where I now reside with my husband and my son. We act as though these problems have never been here until recently. We act as though only Aberdeen is facing these problems. I'm going to tell you right now, having grown up in Westport, 
I went to high school there. I have lived there since I was in the eighth grade. The homeless problem there, it's there. They're afraid to come out because of the way they are treated by the people. The drug addiction, the mental health needs, they are there. They are just so well hidden. Most people don't even realize it. We as a community have come together for so many things. So many things. My father worked for Weyerhaeuser. My mother was a waitress. I've stood on picket lines and I have marched in protests. What our city, what our county needs to do right now is to come together and find a solution that everybody can live with. It's never going to be perfect. It is never, ever going to be what everybody wants. But that's not what we need. We need, we need something now. People are dying in our community because of homelessness. That is a sad, sad reality that we have to face. And we need to come together and find a solution that works for everybody and stops that from happening now. Thank, Thank you. you. We have two online that we're gonna take and then that will be the end of our allotted time. I'll Sorry. <laughs> Ashley, if you're still online and would like to comment, now is your time. You have three minutes. Thank you. I'm speaking as someone who works in social services, and I just want there to be some clearance. I do not work for CAP. I work for other program. I work a full time and a part time. I can barely afford to keep myself afloat. I'm on social service programs because our jobs can't afford to pay us livable wages. And it's, it's coming down to how people are living day by day. I have a college degree. I've gotten awards for the most successful and the most, you know, I'm going to have dreams. That's what everybody says. And I'm about to be homeless. And I'm sure there is many people like me here. And it's maybe not just our county. It's the whole state. It's the whole United States. But there's a lot of us struggling. And there's a lot of homeless people. And there's a lot of people who are low income. And starting with the social services programs and giving them your help and giving them your ears just to hear them means so much. And that's all I ask. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Annie, if you're still online and would like to speak, you have three minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. All right. Can I close public comments? Mayor. And then for the good of the order now, Council First Phillips. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mayor, I would like to declare the current Council President Chair vacant and make a motion to elect a new chair. I second it. Any discussion? Okay. Any discussion? What's the determination? What, what's the grounds for that? What's and, the, what evidence is required that said this should be? In, in January, um, City Council and the Mayor established priorities for the year. Among these were open communication, being respectful, and being supportive of right. staff. The current council president has created a hostile environment for council members oh. and has not upheld his important priority. <laughs> the council and the city need a council chair who will serve the city with respect and professionalism, promoting and welcoming discussion and opportunities to find common ground and champion um, important legislation. 
The current council president has excelled at keeping the public informed about city business and representing her constituents, but has not demonstrated the leadership as council needs to move forward to address important city business as a productive body. Is there any more discussion? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I didn't hear it all that right. You, you, are, are you people talking no. about removing the president? You, yeah. huh? No, sir. Yes, sir. No. No, sir. Have a seat, please. Yeah, have sir. You, you have to either sit down, sir, or we're going to have to leave. Sorry. <laughs> what is the actual thing we're going down? The 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 <laughs> Do you have another comment? There's that which commented. Everybody gets one comment first before we start the second. She's not being removed. It's the council. She's being removed from the position of president of council. Okay. And when it, excuse me, one of the things, if you go online on her council page tonight, um, she's making comments that don't represent the city, Absolutely. that are very slanderous, that could cause lawsuits for our city. But you have to be able to represent the whole council. When you go on a council page, you have to realize that what you're saying is representing your city and it's not. It's causing dissension. Um, when I try to contact our council president, I get no response whatsoever. I get no comments back and she is our leader. That's not my question. My question okay. is whether it's a valid claim or not. It's whether that she's not here to defend herself. So that was my only suggestion that we make to make any type of decision like this while she's here to defend herself. Just that, that I would I would hope that if I was being governor, I would second that. Um, there's a motion on the floor already. Yeah. Um, Mr. Uh -huh. Roberts, for the Lord, we are acting within the scope of our our roles here. Um, I also do not ever receive a response from our council president, despite reaching out numerous times requesting conversation. Um, I think one of the biggest things I hear from constituents is that, um, quite frankly, it's embarrassing to watch us all behave this way. And we need to find a way to collaborate. And after attempts to reach out being unsuccessful, I think we need to move forward with this. And I just think that I don't think it's a question to be unless the person's here to defend themselves. I'd like to call for the question. All right. They were trying to send them up here. Do they want to hear one favor? I No. Ellis? Yes. Gagan? No. Hodgkin? No. Lawrence? No. Mackey? Yes. Garcini? Yes. Fredo? Yes. Peter? Yes. Ward? Yes. Taylor? No. Motion passes six to four, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Yep, we are less of council member four as our new council president. I second it. Is there any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Uh -oh. Okay, that's what's now I guess motion. That's where they go to the order. That's what we're going to bring down. <laughs> okay, so um, I, I wish the young gentleman who um, had comments about Doug's email um, was still here. I don't think he is, and I think Lauren left as well, but I wish they were here. I just want you to know, I'm not part of the Homes Response Committee, but I did reach out to Kryman and some of the other very supportive organizations of the homeless, asking if they knew of anyone who might be willing to help house people until you're able to find housing through services. Um, I, I speak from experience. I have mentioned this in council before I was on council. That since living here, we did take in two different people um, that were homeless, the women that we knew, and we gave them housing until um, they were able to do the things that they needed to do. So I would love to see people that are supportive of the homeless co community um, take, take someone in. You know, we did it and take someone in and give them a place until services are able to house them. And so if you know of anyone who's willing to do that, 
um, if they would reach out to services and say, hey, you know, we're willing to help out. We're willing to give someone a, a temporary place to live until um, such time as services are able to house them. I would, I would love to see that happen. Anything else for the WR? Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm just curious on what this proceeding happened without it being on the agenda. It feels like an attack. I mean, that time really can consider the show the news or presidency, even if there was. But then it just it is, it seems like it was a two fire. So, well, I have one side move right now. I'm just going to just reply to what you said. If you want to confront something, you confront it, but confront it head on. Don't don't blindside like this with all the work that are done themselves or, or, or even have a have any two. We want to give forth a, a recommendation for kind of people who are going to new presidents. I mean, I don't have a problem with Sydney, but the fact that I didn't even have to consider another person without without a five second vote, where I literally was in, in shock and didn't even say no or yes, but it was such a fly inside my door. Shame on all of you for acting that way. <laughs> That you're saying we should, should have put it on the agenda. Bill's line says, like, this with absolutely no preparation to even have uh, you, you, you would have had my vote most likely in the trial for the case. But this type of behavior is, I, I'm in shock that I had no time to even think before the vote passed. Mm -hmm. Is there any more? You guys, oh, okay. I, I was looking at this and I remember Councilwoman Ellis stating that when Riley or uh, Councilmember Carter and Casey brought up uh, the resolutions. Oh no, that was a no. We couldn't do that. That had to be on the agenda. But then, but this does. If it would have been brought up during the end of the order, we would have had to be. We would have had no, to. No, it was It had to be brought up in an agenda. I understand that that's what that may have been what was said. But Carter Roberts' rules had they then circled back and brought it up during the end of the order, we would have been forced to vote on it that night. <laughs> Yes, I need to speak with Council Member Craig Chain regarding the meetings to bring the talk about working with the special agenda. I sent you a report that didn't feel appropriate. Can you speak into your mic, please? Yes, we had an opportunity to, to, to ignore the censure at this time. So it was inappropriate. It was just with everything and a lot of everything that's happening, just to kind of just let the cloud just settle. And we could, that could have been a good one of our events. I could have had some opportunity to even think about. That they're going to be a present for change of the past. It's I just feel completely blindsided with them. Well, well the text, is, the text is already so high, I think there's already so much in some people's minds. For how fast that dollars went through, they decided to really think that we should. So, I, I mean, just personally, um, I've seen a lot of blindsiding going on among this council That's with cool. council members. That, that, uh, buy things until the last minute and then spring it. And that's a kind of a BS thing. I, I agree with that in the situation that happened. There's Mr. Mayor, it's time. Yeah. Okay. We have to go in there. So I'm going to do your Okay. Thank you all.